On this episode of China Uncensored, celebrate the 4th of July with Maoist propaganda. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Fire up the grills, everyone. It's the 4th of July. This is a day people all around the United States celebrate freedom from tyranny and oppression, plus half-off mattress sales. Hey, how about we check in on the National Mall in the heart of Washington, D.C., the capital of our great nation. I bet they've got some great festivities going on there. Oh, that's right, the Smithsonian Folklife Festival is going on, and they even have a China exhibit, which is sponsored, according to the website, by organizations such as the Chinese Embassy and Ministry of Culture. Huh, that slogan looks familiar. Oh, that's right, you see it everywhere in Chinese schools. Kids are made to recite it all the time. It means study well and make progress every day. Well, that's a great phrase. Sounds like whoever said that really valued hard work and intellectual thought. Wait. Wait, what? Mao Zedong said that? The Mao who killed millions of Chinese and forced everyone into his personality cult that included mango worshipping? So you're telling me that on the 4th of July in the National Mall of the capital of the United States of America, there is a giant red Maoist slogan. Interesting choice. That phrase entered popular usage during the Cultural Revolution, a spasm of violence that swept China for a decade. So what is it doing as part of the Smithsonian Folklife Festival? When festival organizers were asked to comment, they said that the artist Danny Young did tell them that the phrase was historically associated with Mao Zedong, but today it is interpreted in different ways, many having nothing to do with Mao Zedong. And they further defended it by saying that the phrase has a specific meaning to the artist. Oh, well, then. I'm sure organizers will look kindly on my submission for next year's festival. I know it has historically been associated with the Ku Klux Klan, but today it has different interpretations, many of which have nothing to do with the terrorizing and killing of innocent people. Or so I've been told. But really, the Communist Party has been trying to pass off its propaganda as Chinese art and culture for years now. In January 2011, at a White House state dinner, Chinese pianist Lang Lang performed the theme song from a movie called Battle on the Shangang Ling Mountain. That's a famous anti-American propaganda piece from the Korean War that calls American troops jackals. Uh, let me just say how extraordinarily uh, proud we have been to host you. We are looking forward to many years of cooperation. A few months later, the Chinese National Ballet came to the Kennedy Center in D.C. and performed a piece called The Red Detachment of Women, which glorifies the torture and killings of so-called class enemies, such as landlords. During the Cultural Revolution, there were only eight artistic performances allowed in China. Red operas, they were called. They were all approved by Mao's wife, Jiang Qing, who's known in the West as Madame Mao. The Red Detachment of Women is one of them. Another is Taking Tiger Mountain by Strategy. No, not the Brian Eno album. For the 2013 CCTV New Year's Gala, the Confucius Institute, whom you may remember from my recent episode about their attempts to spread propaganda in Canadian schools, invited Canadian opera virtuoso Thomas Glenn to sing. Guess what they made him sing? Of course, they didn't tell him what it was about. Ironic, though, that the Confucius Institute had him sing from a red opera, considering they were one of the primary tools Jiang Qing used to attack Confucius. Wait, is that irony or tragedy? Oh God, I can't tell anymore. All of this red opera stuff was meant to teach Chinese people to use violent struggle against their enemies by which I mean the party's enemies. The party has always seen the arts as a powerful way to spread its propaganda, so powerful that eventually people would mix up propaganda and party culture with Chinese culture. And so in the West, a lot of what gets promoted as Chinese culture is in fact communist propaganda. And most of us don't know the difference. Regarding the piece with the Maoist slogan, the Smithsonian said that they didn't want to limit the artist's free expression. In America, we do have the right to freedom of expression, and Independence Day is definitely a time to remember and appreciate this freedom. But freedom also comes with responsibilities, and I would argue that one of those responsibilities is understanding what we are expressing or promoting, and realizing the consequences of that. And when it comes to this kind of propaganda, the kind that's mixed up with arts and culture, we often don't understand that at all. So we end up with a Maoist slogan in the middle of the National Mall as part of a festival that celebrates traditional Chinese culture. 
the very culture that Mao, in fact, tried to destroy. Now, that is ironic. But as someone famous once said, all propaganda has to be popular and has to accommodate itself to the comprehension of the least intelligent of those whom it seeks to reach. What's that, Jim? Do I know who said that? Well, no, I just found it online. It was Hitler? 